All right, thank you very much. Uh, I'm a member of the GPI instrument team as well as the exoplanet survey team. I'm a co-lead for the debris disk science. And uh, today I'll give you an uh, uh, update on the progress of our survey now that it's uh, roughly halfway done. Let's see here. Great. So the purpose of our survey is to explore this region between 5 and 50 AU for uh, young uh, Jupiter mass uh, planets. Uh, let's see here. Roughly, oh, that's not going to work. Right here. <laughs> All right, good. All right, in this region right here, this is a plot of semi-major axis versus planet mass. Previous uh, direct imaging surveys were uh, sensitive to uh, wider separation planets. Uh, and now we're extending to this region here, which is uh, beginning to overlap with the radial velocity detected planets between 5 and 10 AU. Uh, we've been awarded 890 hours of uh, Gemini South time. Uh, making this one of the largest and most systematic surveys for extrasolar planets. The other large survey is being conducted uh, by SPHERE on the VLT. Uh, we have 600 targets that we plan to observe. So far, we've observed 340. Uh, GPI is specifically designed for high contrast imaging. It's a facility instrument, though, so there are many users and principal investigators outside of the GPI's team uh, uh, who are interested in, for example, imaging uh, pre main sequence stars or uh, some targets which are not on our reserved catalog. You need a star that's brighter than ninth magnitude. Uh, uh, to serve as a natural guide star, has a relatively small field of view of 2.8 arc seconds by 2.8 arc seconds, and uh, it achieves uh, relatively low uh, spectral resolution in the near infrared uh, wavelengths. The uh, uh, survey started in December of 2014. Uh, it's strictly conducted in the H band. Uh, and we also have a dual channel polarimetry mode where we search for uh, polarization signatures from scattering from dust grains around stars. Uh, the, uh, the sample of stars was developed in a period of three years preceding the survey uh, by Jenny Patience and Insuk Song. Uh, and we've selected uh, stars that are all roughly younger than 300 million years and within 150 parsec. These are the directly imaged planets so far with GPI. Uh, three of these have uh, three of these systems are previously known: HR eight seven nine 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 five zero eight six B and Beta Pic B. Uh, and our new uh, detection is fifty one Airy B. Uh, fifty one Airy is actually part of the Beta Pic moving group, so its age is twenty million years. Uh, it is a hierarchical triple system, so there's uh, a th 2,000 AU to the south, or roughly an arc minute to the south, there's a, a close pair of uh, binary M dwarfs. Uh, the mass of 51 Ari B is roughly two to three Jupiter masses. And uh, because it's such a young system, it was uh, imaged many times before by uh, the previous generation of instrumentation. So this really highlights the fact that uh, this improved contrast provided by GPI really makes a difference in our exploration parameter space. The uh, spectrum uh, shows deep methane absorption. So uh, much like, here's the methane band here. In the H band, we see this absorption. So it's very much like our, our own Jupiter. Uh, Eric Nielsen, one of our postdocs, is developing uh, 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 our sensitivity, uh, assessing the sensitivity of our survey after 300 stars, and this is our sensitivity plot, uh, our current sensitivity plot as a function of uh, planet mass. Here's 10 Jupiter masses and semi-major axis. Previous surveys would not have been sensitive to planets in this regime, and this is in fact what GPI is accomplishing, and this point shows the detection of 51 Ari B. It's very interesting now. Now this is a plot of our entire sample so far, but you can split the sample up uh, into the different uh, stellar masses. And this is quite interesting. If you look at our, uh, our uh, sensitivity limits as a function of spectral uh, uh, type or stellar mass, all the extrasolar planets are detected around higher mass stars. 
So uh, we were sensitive indeed to uh, Jupiter mass planets at this range of semi-major axes around lower mass stars, but they have not been detected. They're not there. So there is, seems to be a strong correlation of uh, the frequency of giant planets in the 5 to 50 AU uh, semi-major axis region with stellar mass. Uh, we still want to finish our survey to see if this is confirmed, if this is uh, real. Uh, and in fact, as we uh, image the remainder of our sample, another 260 stars, we expect five new planet detections. Here's an image gallery of the debris disks we've imaged. Uh, uh, the structure and morphology of these debris disks can indicate the presence of sub-Jupiter mass planets that aren't directly detected, but uh, modify through gravitational perturbations the structure of the debris disks. So for the remainder of the talk, I wanted to highlight sort of the wider impact of GPI. Uh, and I'll discuss two systems which both have debris disks and directly imaged planets. Uh, one is HD 106-906, where the central star is actually a binary pair of F5 stars, age 13 million years in Skosen. And I'll also talk about Beta Pic, which is a more massive star uh, at 19.3 parsec in age 20 million years. So first with uh, 106-906, the uh, Extrasolar planet uh, 106906b uh, has 11 Jupiter masses, but it's at a very wide separation. It's at 700 uh, AU from the star, and this was in fact uh, detected uh, pri previous to the start of the GPI survey uh, by Vanessa Bailey et al. here in Arizona. Uh, and with GPI, what we accomplished is the uh, detection of scattered light from the, the debris disk surrounding the primary. And the new result, and it's quite surprising, is that the debris disk detected with GPI, its position angle is misaligned with that of the star. We uh, looked at archival HST images and saw uh, features in the outer region which suggested a highly perturbed debris disk. And what I'm showing you here is our latest data using HST STIS. This is unpublished, the data, the observations were made just six weeks ago confirming that the morphology of the outer disk is highly perturbed. Uh, this is not instrumental. This is the actual structure of the debris disk showing uh, a long and flat westward extension and a radially truncated, this is roughly 300 AU, and vertically distended uh, eastern side as if the whole system is in the state of dynamical upheaval. Uh, may be analogous to our own solar system's period of late heavy bombardment. Uh, this uh, work has already uh, inspired uh, two theory papers that have come out investigating how the planet or a passing star could invoke uh, these uh, uh, asymmetries. We also have um, looked at the ALMA cycle one data, which is uh, non-detection in the sense that the signal to noise of the cycle one data is uh, two and a half or two sigma, but uh, uh, the orientation of these uh, uh, contours is exactly aligned with the position angle of the disk. And we've applied for uh, cycle five ALMA time to discover the uh, spatial distribution of the millimeter grains. Moving on to Beta Pic, Beta Pic has always been known to be an edge on system since it was first discovered in 1984. So when the planet was discovered, Beta Pic B, a natural question was you have a directly imaged planet, the system is edge on. Is this a unique case in nature where we would be able to characterize an extrasolar planet not only because it's directly imaged, but because it will also transit the star? So we've been monitoring Beta Pic B over the last three years using GPI. We've published three papers on this. And in our last paper, uh, uh, we've determined the orbital elements uh, very precisely. Here you can see that uh, you can see the time here uh, and that Beta Pic B is now about to transit in front of the star. Unfortunately, our analysis indicates uh, through this work by graduate student Jason Wang at Berkeley that the, the orbital elements uh, aren't a, show that the inclination is not exactly a John. Unfortunately, the planet will not pass in front of the star. It's just missing it by 0.2 AU, or 10 milliarcseconds. 
the good news is the Hill sphere of the planet is transiting. So this is an opportunity to search for uh, planetary rings. The, uh, what GPI has provided is this ephemeris for the transit, which is now being used by many groups all around the world to monitor beta pick for planetary rings. The Hill sphere has already, oops, the Hill sphere has already started passing uh, in front of the star uh, in early April. Uh, by June 20th, half a Hill sphere uh, will be in front of the star, and close to approach is August 31st. The problem is that Beta Pic is at right ascension six hours, so you can observe it from uh, most observatories in the summer. Uh, so we have two solutions. We have a, a Hubble program to monitor uh, Beta Pic using WIFC3 UVIS in spatial scanning mode. We've already obtained data at two epochs before the ingress, uh, and we will uh, reobserve Beta Pic uh, in July and August to see if there's been any extinction of light due to foreground dust surrounding the planet. Uh, we also have collaborated with teams in Antarctica. Uh, it turns out that Antarctica is a great place uh, for astronomy in July and August because it's always dark there. Uh, the, uh, the Chinese and French have transit monitoring telescopes there. The Chinese at Dome A and uh, the French at Dome C. And uh, the French in particular will be monitoring Beta Pic 24 hours a day, seven days a week through all of July and August searching for ring signatures. What do we expect to find? Well, what about moons? The transit depths of a moon of, of moons is roughly a micromag. So we don't have that precision. Our precision is uh, roughly a millimag. So that is very, uh, very good for detecting rings. And if the structure of rings shows gaps, maybe we could also infer the presence of circumplanetary moons. OK, so that was a, a brief summary of what we've accomplished with, uh, with uh, GPI to date. Well, we've discovered one new uh, extrasolar planet. Uh, we've determined the orbital elements of the other extrasolar planets. We uh, can characterize their atmospheres through the spectra that we obtained with GPI. And there's a much broader impact uh, with follow-up HST and ALMA imaging, uh, as well as hopefully with JWST in the future. And uh, this transit monitoring campaign of Beta Pic is ongoing with the potential of discovering uh, planetary rings around another planet. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. We have uh, about three minutes for questions. So if you have a question, please come up to the mic, introduce yourself. Okay, well, I think we'll, thank you very much. Move on to our next speaker. Oh, we have a question? Oh, perfect. Thanks, Paul. It's great to see the uh, results coming along. And I wanted to ask about the sensitivity plot you showed earlier in your talk, where yeah. you had the contours. Yeah. Uh, and was there an uh, assumption in those sensitivity calculations of if each star had one planet, then we should have seen it, seen it for this many stars, uh, or was it driven by occurrence rates of uh, it was driven by occurrence rates? Yeah, so we were in fact uh, using uh, uh, some of the occurrence rates uh, in terms of uh, the 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 distribution of orbital elements. Is that uh, from RV surveys? Is that what you're asking? Or? Right. Yeah. yeah, I know the yeah, sensitivity yeah. of RV starts to peter out once you get to, you know, uh, yeah, we were. Orbital so period. some of the assumptions have to do with the RV statistics um, from um, uh, uh, from coming at all and uh, John Johnson's 2010 paper. Okay. First, yeah. Yeah. Right. Thanks. <laughs>